I've been flintlock hunting for six years now. Just like with anything you start in life, it takes time to learn how to do it. I've had misses, misfires, total equipment failures. I've missed on an opportunity on a late season buck. I've missed opportunities to put meat in the freezer for my family. But after a few years, you start learning from those mistakes. You pay more attention to your gun. You make sure that your flint is at the perfect angle. Uh, you tighten the hammer regularly to make sure your flint's tight. I replace my powder in the flash pan multiple times during a hunt. Even with these precautions, you can still have misfires or ignition problems. In Pennsylvania, our flintlock season is the last season. The deer have been pressured, they're on high alert, and uh, definitely more challenging to hunt. The cold weather and the snow-covered forest floor can make quiet approaches to your stand near impossible. There's a certain intrigue about using a primitive weapon, knowing that I'm using a style of gun that was used hundreds of years ago. The connection to history of harvesting a doe and eating fresh venison seared by the open flames of a fire started on a cold, snowy January day. This late season was different for me from last year. I uh, harvested a buck with my bow during archery and felt less pressure to fill a tag and put more of an emphasis on slowing down and enjoying the fleeting time in the woods before the final deer season closed. I savored the snow-covered mountain views that North Central Pennsylvania has to offer and the sunrises and the sunsets that came with each stand set. My goal was to enjoy the time I had to hunt, be patient for an opportunity, and film the harvest of a doe.
There's a lighted knock. I have blood. I don't have a nice good blood. Good, good blood. Oh yeah. A feeling she's she's right down there. There she is.